Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys five ways that we can outline or border an image inside of GIMP. So the first three options are going to be more about framing a photo digitally, and then the next two options will be more about taking individual PNG images and your graded document, and to outline them with a white or a black border going around the selection of that layer. So let's start with this image of the corgi over here, and we'll add a simple border around the outside of this image. So the way we can do this is to go up to the filters menu, decor, and then add border. So when you add a border to your image, it's going to take the size of the original frame and then add a colored border on the outsize of that. So this will resize your document if the current layer is equal to the full size of your document. And so if you have border size X, that means it's going to be popping out 12 pixels to the left here, 12 pixels to the right there, and the same with Y. So a border Y size of 12 means 12 on the top side and 12 on the bottom side. Now generally you'll keep this consistent, but you can use whatever values you want. So in this case, I'm going to change the border color from that blue to a white and we'll go ahead and hit OK here. So I'll go ahead and take this border color of a blue and uh, change it to something I like a little bit better. So let's go with a lighter blue and we'll go ahead and hit OK. Now you could just do white with this if you wanted to, but one thing I want to point out here is if your color is anything but uh, I believe deep white or deep black, then you'll get this line here at each of the corners, much like a real wooden picture frame. And on the right side of that, you'll see it's a little brighter and down here, it's darker. It's kind of giving you the illusion of a 3D effect there where the frame is not just one solid piece, but actually different pieces of wood, or in this case, blueness, that receive varying amounts of light. And we can see that at the top right hand corner too. So that can make an image a little bit more interesting than just a simple white outline. If you decide that that's not big enough, you can hit Control Z a couple times, go back up to the decor menu, add the border in, and just change the value to something larger. So I'll do 30 pixels here, and we can see that generates it. It's a little bit more visible here, and we have the border of the frame. Now you may decide that you don't want a border that has such a hard edge. So you can see between the original image and this border, there's just that very harsh line. So you can kind of have it blur together a bit with a fuzzy border. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that regular border, go back over to the filters menu, do decor, and then fuzzy border. So this is similar to the normal border, except that as the border gets closer to the image on the inside, it's going to be blurring more of those colors together. So it'll give you a smoother transition from the original image to the edge of the border. So let's increase the border size here to 30 and we'll hit OK here. And so it goes ahead and frames your image, but in a less harsh way. So you can see we zoom in here the colors are blurred together. So we have the greens of the original image, and then it transitions into the pure white that we set the color as. So that might end up being a more preferable effect for you. So now I'm gonna go back to the original image and show you guys a vignette effect. So a vignette effect will have generally black edges around the image. And then as you come in towards the center, you'll get an oval shape that allows the original image to show through. And generally that'll be focused on the target of the image, whereas everything else in the background is kind of de-emphasized by being covered with the black. And then everything else around the edges gets de-emphasized by being covered with a partial layer of blackness. So we can find the vignette effect by going up to filters and then lights and shadows, and you'll see it down here right below long shadow. And with the vignette effect, you have a preview so we can see that there's a little bit of blurriness between the outer black area and the inner, but we may want that to be more dramatic. And also the corgi in this image is a little bit off center. So we probably want to take the center Y and drop that down. So I'll go ahead and do that by uh, increasing the center Y. So let's go ahead there and maybe we'll take the center X and uh, move that over to the right as well. And then we can increase the radius to have a little bit more of the original image showing through, but not too much. And then if we want more of the shadows to seep through on the center area, we can increase the softness, which should generally darken these areas a little bit. If the shape of this vignette isn't quite how you want it, you want to maybe stretch it out to a bit more of an eyeball shape than an egg shape. Uh, you can also play around with the proportion and the squeeze. Uh, to get it looking more like you desire. So I'll go ahead and leave it there and hit OK. 
Now, um, obviously with the original image, it's kind of off center now. So what I might want to do is cut away some of the edges over here so that it's more evenly distributed on each side. So to do that, I'll do the rectangular select tool and kind of drag my shape to where I want it. So I may need this to come down here a little bit at the top. I'm just dragging the edges in a bit and maybe this can be a little further out there. And when you have the selection you want, you can go up to the image menu and do fit canvas to selection, which will basically hide the rest of the image, anything that's not in the selection. So now if we were to export it, only the areas that are actually showing in this canvas would be in the final exported image. So next let's show you guys how to do a stroke outline effect. So when you stroke an outline of an image, a logo, a character, anything they have a PNG of, it's going to kind of make it look like a sticker if you make it have a white stroke around the border. But you can also do it with a black outline too. It'll make the layer that you are working on stand out more if you combine that with some other images in the background. So first I'm going to want to take this layer of this logo and stretch it out to the image size. So right click layer to image size. And by doing that, the stroke will be able to go outside of the original bounds of the logo. And I'm going to right click and do alpha to selection to select everything that's actually inside of this layer. So you see how it gives us a perfect circle around the logo uh, because that is the shape of the resolve logo. And now if we want to stroke it, first we should change our foreground color and set that to white or whatever color you desire. Then you can right click on the canvas, go to edit, and then stroke selection. So generally you'll do a stroke line with a solid color and you can set the width of that line here. So generally when you use the stroke selection tool you'll do it with stroke line solid color and then set a line width down here. Alternatively if you want more customization over the stroke you can use the paintbrush tool which will use whatever settings you have over in the toolbox window over on the left so you can do a lot of customization there if you don't want it to just be a solid colored line but for simple uses we'll just do solid color uh, with the pixels of maybe something like 10 we can just leave it like that and see how it goes and when we do that uh, you'll notice that this white line gets drawn around our image now what you may notice is that when we do this on the same layer, it actually cuts into the logo. So how we can get around this white line covering up any part of the logo is to undo that stroke. Make sure that the image is selected by right clicking and doing alpha to selection. And now what I'm actually going to do is create a new layer. So I'll just leave it with the default name. Move it beneath your image or logo layer. And now we're going to stroke on this layer instead. So same process, right click, edit, stroke selection. And uh, when you have the line width set, go ahead and stroke that. So what this makes happen is that the white stroke will now be underneath the logo. So that might mean you need to increase the size of the stroke, but the logo will always show on top, uh, which means that nothing will get cut off from the original logo. So let's go ahead and uh, redo that stroke with a larger size. And we'll make it 20 pixels this time instead and go ahead and stroke it. So that'll work for many simple purposes. But if you zoom in, you may also notice that the line stroke is very edgy here. It's more like using the pencil tool than a paint brush. So if you want the edges to be a bit softer than that, then we can stroke it using the paint brush tool instead. So I'm going to delete that layer we just created, recreate it. And now when I go to right click edit stroke selection, I'll use the paintbrush tool instead. So that'll use whatever size you have in the paintbrush tool editor. So I might want to increase the size there. And we may choose that we want to select a brush with a less hard edge, but let's see how it goes with a hardness of 100 and stroke it. If it's still not giving you the results you're looking for, one final option we can try is to do an ellipse select tool and then simply fill in the background behind this logo. So if I select an ellipse here, we can control the edges of this ellipse until we have it perfectly in line with what we want. And then we can simply go ahead and fill it in with the paint bucket tool using white color on a layer behind the logo. So any of those options should work for you. One final option that's really similar to using the ellipse or rectangular select and then fill tool is to do a fill selection. To do a fill selection, obviously we have to select 
the layer. So I'll do a right click alpha to selection. I'll hide this uh, underlying white layer and create a new layer. And then what we can do is right click, go to edit and then do fill selection outline. So you can do that with a solid color or one of the built in GIMP patterns. Generally, you'll do that with a solid color. And when I hide the logo now, you'll see that underneath it is a perfect white outline of the original logo. So a few things that we can do with this outline layer is to adjust the position of either the outline or the original image in order to create kind of a drop shadow effect. So if I bring this over here to the top left, we can see that this outline will pop out a little. So if we adjust the location of the background layer or the logo layer now, we can create something of a drop shadow effect uh, by positioning the layers on top of each other, kind of making it look like there's a white shadow underneath. Now that doesn't make a lot of sense, so you might want to make it black if you are going for a shadow effect. Another option would be to take the underlying layer and to scale it up. So if I left click on this layer with the scale tool and I hold control, I can make the outline layer expand until it's bigger than the one on top. So now if I show the top layer, I get this huge white outline underneath the original logo. And of course, if you want it to be a different color than white, just change the color in your foreground color selection. And you could do something like paint bucket fill on that white layer. And suddenly it's now a black outline. So that's five, arguably six good ways that you can outline or border an image inside of GIMP. I hope that this tutorial has shown you guys something you didn't know before. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.